The range of a list of numbers is the difference between the largest and the smallest. For example, the range of the list 1, 5, 1, 6, 3 is 6 minus 1, which is 5. Determine the range of this list. The largest number is 13, the smallest number is 4, so the range would be 13 minus 4, which is 9. The list 11, 5, A, 13, 10 has a range of 12. Determine the two possible values of A. Okay. Well, one scenario is that A is greater than 13, and if that's the case, then the range would be A minus the smallest number. And they're saying it's 12, so that means A would be 17. The other scenario is if A is the smallest number, meaning it's less than 5, then that way the range would be calculated as 13 minus A, and they're saying that's 12, so that means A would be 1. So 17 and 1 are the two possible values of A. The list 6 plus 2x squared, 6 plus 4x squared, 6 and 6 plus 5x squared has a range of 80 to determine the two possible values. All right, let's move this up a bit. So these, let me just list them in order of, in terms of ascending order. We have 6 and then 6 plus 2x squared because the x squareds are all positive, right? So this is only going to be increasing in value, 4x squared and then 5x squared. Correct? So now, therefore, the range is going to be the big guy minus the little guy. So it's going to be 6 plus 5x squared minus 6. And there, oh, they've already given us that it's 80. Okay. So then this reduces to 5x squared is 80. x squared, therefore, would be 16. And therefore, x would be plus or minus 4. And those are the two possible values of x. And finally, we've got the list 5x plus 3y, 0, x plus y, and 3x plus y has a range of 19. If x and y are integers with x greater than 0 and y greater than 0, determine the values of x and y. So again, I'm going to list them in what I believe is ascending order, x plus y. The fact that they're both positive helps me a lot because I can kind of conclude very quickly that this is the ascending order going from smallest to biggest. And then therefore the range would be 5x plus 3y minus 0. And they're telling me that is 19 right here. OK, so let's do this. So Well, that's just 5x plus 3y is 19. And I guess we have to find integer solutions to this. OK, so let's start with the smallest integer, uh, smallest positive integer, since they're both greater than 0. When y is 1, we will not get an integer for x. When y is 2, we won't. But when y is 3, we will get 2 for x. And you can continue like this when it's 4, when it's 5, and so on. But you'll find that x equals 2 and y equals 3 are the only integer solutions for this problem. A bag contains n balls numbered from 1 to n. When with n greater than or equal to 2. There are n times n minus 1, times n minus 1, ways in which Julio can remove one ball from the bag and then remove a second ball. This is because there are n possible choices for the first ball, and then n minus 1 possible choices for the second ball. For example, when a bag contains six balls numbered from 1 to 6, four of which are black and two of which are gold, there are 6 times 5, which equals 30 ways in which he can remove two balls in this way, and 4 times 3, which is 12, ways in which both balls are black. Okay. Part A. A bag contains 11 balls numbered 1 through 11. 7 are black, 4 are gold. Julio removes 2. What is the probability that both balls are black? Okay, well, probability... Uh, it's going to be a fraction. The, the bottom is the total. So there's 11 balls. So the total ways of getting 2 is 11 times 10, right? And then the probability is talking about they want both of the balls to be black. And how many black balls are there? 7. So that's going to be 7 times 6. 7 choices for the first, 6 choices for the second. And if I've done this correctly, that will be 42 over 110. And in lowest terms, 21 over 55, I think. Okay, moving right along. 
For some integer g greater than or equal to 2, a second bag contains 6 black and g gold balls, and they're numbered from 1 to g plus 6. Julio removes two balls as described above. The probability that both balls are black is 1 over 8. Determine the value of g. Okay, so the probability has been given. And then to calculate it, uh, the, the total is going to be g plus 6 times g plus 5. And then the top number uh, is, what are they trying to figure out? Oh, both balls are black, so there's six black balls, so six times five. So that's the setup, that's the math, and then we just got to solve it. So cross multiply, and you get g plus six times g plus five. And this is what, 30 times eight, so 240. Expand this all out, and you get g squared plus 11, g plus 30. And then I'm just going to subtract the 240, so this will be minus 210. And I think this factors, let's see here, g, g, 21, and 10. Yeah, that'll do it, positive, negative. Yep, so that means g is equal to 10. For some integer x greater than 2, a third bag contains two x black balls and x gold balls. The numbers are num the balls are numbered from 1 to 3x. Uh, Julio removes two balls uh, as described above. The probability that both balls are black is 7 over 16. Determine the value of x. All right, same story. 7 over 16, again, is the probability, and that's going to be... Uh, so the, the bottom number is the total. So the total number of balls is 3x, right? 2x for black and x for gold. So 3x times 3x minus 1. That's the total number of ways of getting two balls. And then they are saying that both balls are black. Okay, so the number of black is 2x, so the top would be 2x times 2x minus 1. That is the equation, so I'm sure you can do this, but I'll do it just in case, you know, you, you need to be shown exactly how to do it. So the x's disappear, I just bring the 3 and the 2 over, and then let's see if I can, can this reduce, I don't think so, 21 times... 3x minus 1, and then was that 48? No, hold on. 3, uh, no, 32. So wow, I don't know where I got 30, 48 from. 32 times 2x minus 1. Okay, and then to expand this 63x minus 21, 64x minus 32, and therefore x is 11. And the last one. The last one is, for some integer r greater than or equal to 3, a fourth bag contains 10 black and 18 gold, and red r red balls. Okay, the, number, uh, the balls are numbered 1, 2, r plus 28. This time, Julio draws three balls, one after another. The probability that two of these three are black and one is gold is 1 over 3,000. What is the largest possible value of r? So we have 18 black, and we have, uh, sorry, 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 we have uh, 10 black, actually. And we have 18 gold, and we have R that are red. Okay, and 1 over 3,000 is the probability of uh, two of these three balls are black, and one of these three balls is gold. Okay, so we got to think about this. So the scenarios are as follows. Two are black and one is gold, but it could be in different orders. These are the three orders, I believe. Yeah. So for this guy, the probability, the, the number of ways, because we're going to put the number of ways. Yeah. Let me just do the denominator first. That's easy. There's R plus 28 total, right? Because we have R plus 18 plus 10. So R plus 28 and then r plus 27, and then times r plus 26. That's that's the uh, denominator of the probability. That's pretty straightforward. The numerator is a little bit, a little bit, not tricky, but got to think about this. So the BBG, there's 10 possibilities for the B, 9 for the second B, and 18. For the BGB, it would be 10 times 18 times 9. For the GBB, 
that would be 18 times 10 times 9. All of these are the same, by the way. So if I add them up, it would be really just 3 times 10 times 9 times 18, because they're, they're all the same. They're just in different order. And I believe that is the math. Hopefully I've done this correctly. Yeah. Okay, now one thing, though, they're talking about largest. So... Oh, at least. Ah, okay, so that means that this is a greater than at least. So it's, yeah, greater than or equal to type situation. Okay. All right, I got it. Okay, so let's proceed with this, and let's solve, I guess, for the, we're solving for the R. Oh, boy, but there's a, there's a, there's a, there's going to be R to the power of 3. Hmm. Let me just do the math here. So we got 1 over 3,000 is less than or equal to 4860. And then you got these R plus 28, R plus 27, and R plus 26. Yeah. Now, yeah, I don't want to expand this out and do a, you know, R to the power of 3. So I'm going to estimate. Uh, let me first figure out what number I'm working with here. So if I cross multiply, I will get uh, less than or equal to 3,000 times 4860, 14580000. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, so you've got three things that when multiplied together are less than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number and sort of approximate what it could be if you were to take the cube root. And when you do, you get about approximately 244. So that makes me think that these guys are somewhere around 244. I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but that's sort of my guess. So let's see what happens. Let's try Let's try r equals, let's try the first one. So let's see what happens. This guy right here. Let's try r plus 28 is equal to 244. And when you do that and you plug it all in, this times this times this, that's r plus 28 times r plus 27 times r plus 26, it will be... Uh, let's see here. One, four, three, four, eight, six, six, four. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's try R plus twenty eight is two forty five. And if you do that, then this guy becomes 1452654040. And if r plus 28 is equal to 246, then that guy becomes 1470588080. So this one has gone over this guy. So the largest that maintains that inequality is r plus 28 is 445. And therefore, R is 217. And that is the answer to the question. R is 217. In figure 1, triangle ABC has points D and E on AB and AC, respectively. So that DE is parallel to BC. In this case, triangle ABC and triangle ADE are similar triangles because their corresponding angles are equal. These triangles thus have the property that AD over AB is equal to AE over AC is equal to DE over BC. In figure 2, WXYZ is a trapezoid with WX parallel to ZY. Also, points M and N are and are on WZ and XY respectively with MN parallel to WX and ZY. Suppose that DE is 6, BC is 10, EC is 10, uh, 3, and AE is X. Determine the value of X. So I guess we just use this equation, I'm assuming, and let's see what we get. So 
uh, here, what do we, AE, this guy is X, AC, well, let's see here, AE is X, and then EC is 3, so AX would be X plus 3, and then the DE, which is this guy, they're telling me is 6, and the BC, they're telling, saying is 10, so there you go, that's the setup. It is easily done by cross-multiplying 6x plus 18, I believe. And therefore, 4x would be 18. And therefore, x would be 18 over 4, which is 9 over 2 in lowest terms. Part B. Suppose that in figure 2, which is right here, maybe I'll leave figure 2 in the, in the screen so you can see it. Wx over Zy is 3 over 4, and Wm over Mz equals Xn over Ny, which is 2 over 3. Determine the value of Wx over Mn. So we are given these uh, helpful equations, and we have to find the value of this guy. All right, so let's draw that shape, because I think I'm going to have to extend it. So that's the shape, but I'm going to extend it so that it becomes a triangle, and if it becomes a triangle then it becomes easier. So I'll call this point P, and everything else stays the same, W, X, M, N, Z, and Y. Okay. And now let's make that those equations. Uh, hold on. W, yeah. So W, X, and z y so w x and z y is three over four so okay and then w m and m z are two over three so w m if this was two x from here to here then this will be three x okay um so let's see here, using the same similar triangles, PW or PZ would be the same as the bases, which would be WX over ZY. And WX over ZY, they've already told me, is 3 over 4. Okay? So that means that this 3 over 4, since it's the same as this, it's PW over PZ. But PZ is really P... W plus that 2x plus that 3x, so px, pw plus 5x. So that means that if I cross multiply with this guy, we get 3pw plus 15x is equal to 4pw. So that basically means that pw is equal to 15x. So pw is 15x. Okay. And therefore, if we go back to this guy right here, PW over PZ, since it's equal to WX over ZY, and WX over ZY is really, uh, if we were to, uh, let's see, hold on. Oh, sorry, I, I think I should have put, I should have made a comparison between PM. I think that, that will be much more helpful. So PW over PM, just kind of going to, to this guy here. So that's going to then compare WX and MN. Uh, okay, that's probably helpful, more helpful. So PM is really just PW plus WM right so then therefore wx over mn is pw which we had figured out was 15x and then pw again 15x and then wm is 2x so this becomes 15x over 17x which is just 15 over 17 and there you go that is the answer that they wanted 15 over 17